Hello, today is Thursday and I usually have my dietitian appointment in the morning. I rescheduled her. I mean, she had to reschedule me, so I've already seen her. So today I just have, well, I have a, teaching a lesson. I'm teaching a lot of extra lessons, not a lot. But I'm teaching extra lessons this week and probably next because auditions are coming up. They're doing auditions differently and they're gonna be recorded. That's what I'm doing. And did you see my pretty roses that I got for Mother's Day? Aren't they pretty? I decided to move them here. I thought, well, if I'm gonna be teaching and having appointments and oh, they're looking a little bit. And practicing, I like to look at them. So I'm gonna have them here today on my desk. I have my coffee. I'm all ready. I have everything set up. Oh, that tastes really good this morning. And I'm, I don't know, I woke up really thirsty, so I'm sipping on my kombucha. And guava goddess, of course, is the best flavor. If you don't know that, it is. What I do, it's like really, I don't know, I feel like kombucha in general, especially this one, it's really it's strong. It's And I like the flavor, but I feel like it's strong. I dilute it. Like I've had this same bottle since last week, and I'll drink it and then fill it with water, and I'll drink half of it and fill it with water, so... Anyways, I will finish this one, I think, today. It's, I mean, if you can see, it's pretty diluted compared to what it usually looks like. So I'm going to sip on that. So. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. Okay. Start with uh, the first one, which is the Beethoven. They're new. It. Still the same things about the string crossings. Making sure that you're barely moving that bow. I mean, it comes up the first time on that second line, and just barely move your bow on those string crossings. Where are you doing that in the bow? That might be the issue too. Yeah, can you try that? Try getting more to the tip. So I think that might be the biggest problem. And then. Yeah, that's it. Uh, the second movement of the Beethoven. Make it too smooth, it'll, it won't, it'll lose that, kind of that power in that. I'm stopping my bow and then grabbing the string. Try that again. The bowing, so down, up, down. Down, up, down. Start close with the frog, yeah. Yeah, now a little faster with Go a little bit lower in the bow and a little more on the string. Yeah, that's it. Does that feel okay? Yes, okay, now start, let's see, uh, that's a down bow. For now, go ahead and jump to the third, the that Tchaikovsky. The last four measures are hard because it, we have to switch and it modulates. You did really well with that, and I could tell you were really thinking about it. Uh, did you make a decision about that bowing on? I just said it just does it, what's written, down up down. Down up down, yeah. okay. Okay, so basically what I told you, he's agreeing, so. We might all be wrong, but that's what we're doing. But it's what's on the paper. It's all, what's on the paper. You can't so, get in trouble for what's... <laughs> yes, you can't get in trouble for what's on the paper, correct. Yeah. Um, and then I, what I would like to do, so I'm asking in, in front of you, um, is have you, these next couple days, like record yourself? Are you having your students do that too? Yeah. yeah. How should she send it though? I want you to be doing that at least once a day. I'm going to give you feedback um, and that will be actually, it'll be serving a couple purposes. You're going to get used to recording it. 
Um, I want you to watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I can tell you, um, I can give you feedback and how to practice and stuff like that too. So then by the time you record it for real, um, it should be a lot easier and a lot smoother. Okay, so, but right now we have to learn the rest of the notes. So let's look at that next line, 522 it looks like. And it's the same thing, it's a two, three, four, and they're gonna be half steps. Good, now we're gonna put those together. Now we're gonna stretch that first finger back so you're doing an octave. And you're now, you were in third position, now you're in second. And there's no slur, down, up. Yes. And the reason why I do that, if you can see, now my first finger is right there where I need it. Oh, you got a little bit too high. Good, do it two more times. Do you feel better about this one? Yeah. Good, it's tricky, isn't it? Tchaikovsky's tricky. Okay, so let's go to Mendelssohn. See where that is at. Really good, it's so much better than when I heard it, what was like, just two weeks ago, I think? Okay, so oh goodness, those octaves. Why are composers so mean and give us octaves? I mean, was it Tchaikovsky or Beethoven? No, I think both of them, I think, gave us octaves. And now Mendelssohn's giving you octaves. So guess what you get to practice? Lots of octaves, but you'll get better at them. Do you hear that they're just a little bit off? They're hard, aren't they? So you're just gonna practice those octaves slowly, for lots of practice shifts. You will be able to play them in your sleep. I mean, that's, and so just make sure that you're thinking ahead. Okay, I'm gonna go up and now I'm gonna go down. So now my hand needs to stretch to allow those fingers to um, be farther apart. Okay, so all it's gonna take is your thumb, you're getting your arm around, but if you can get that thumb around, that's gonna give you just that extra length so it'll be higher. Try it one more time. I'm gonna have you do it one note per bow just to force you to go so slow that you can listen to every single note. It's too low. A little bit higher. Okay, now do it with the right bowing, but still slow make sure that you're getting a little more contact with the bow as you're going higher up and the higher up you go your bow is going to get is going to go a little bit closer to the bridge you know what I think you're playing it better in tune as well because you can hear it better because the sound is cleaner because you're you know doing the bow properly so it's more contact and the higher you go closer to the bridge those two things because the G is going to take more contact it's a thicker string and we're shortening the string, so we have to go closer to the bridge. Okay, have the good ear. Do not let yourself get away with anything. Like, be super picky. Okay? okay? All right, thank you. Good job. Bye-bye. <laughs>a little bit now that I'm starting to teach more and uh, have more of a scheduled work day or work days I just want to talk about you know meal plans and schedules and in recovery getting to that stage where you're trying to fit it all in you need to go about it where you have your schedule and now okay do does my meal plan even fit in here oh it qu doesn't quite okay well I'll skip that snack and go to my next meal or whatever it is I think it's really easy to do that, but I am trying to do what is recommended right now because I'm not to that point in recovery where I can just kind of um, go about my day and, and eat intuitively or anything like that. I need a lot more guidance. And so what's been happening is, especially this last week with auditions and I start to get stressed out, it's like, well, I don't want to eat my lunch until I have everything checked off. And it's like my meal plan is not a checklist. It's not a, 
something that's added to my to-do list. I guess you can think about it that way, but it's not like one item. It's not like meal plan. It's like I have to make sure that I have my meal plan and then schedule things around that. Like I'm just not to the point yet. I want to be, but in recovery where I can just eat intuitively and have my schedule and kind of work things out around that, I have to do it the opposite. And I think that's so important for a lot of us to be thinking about our meal plans and then scheduling things around it. I don't know, sometimes it just gets overwhelming if anyone else feels that way too. It's like, this is like a lot. Like, can I just have a day off and just not think about it? Well, maybe later, but right now, if I take a day off of not thinking about it, like that's not, like it's not gonna be a good situation. I guess I'm in a state right now, I cannot go like longer than a three hour period of actually having scheduled students or anything like that because I can't go longer than that without eating so because if I end up skipping a meal I'll just instead of like okay getting to it right when I can it's so tempting or just it's just so easy I don't even think it's tempting it's just easy to well I'll just wait till the next snack I'll just you know maybe have a bigger snack but then it just becomes that one time becomes well I did it the other day and that kind of worked out so I'll do it again and then that becomes into a new habit and then that new habit even if it's sort of very innocently started and doesn't have any intention behind it the eating disorder can definitely grab onto that and those little things can add up and before you know it not exactly following this meal plan anymore before you know it you'll have a full-blown relapse so i just know that it's really important at least for myself and i'm sure others can relate If it's not a priority and you put other things on top of that, then it's, you know, it's just so easy. So I don't know what you guys think about scheduling and meal plans and making sure everything gets in. And does that seem overwhelming? It can seem overwhelming to me a lot, but I kind of have to take it as part of my schedule and not just a thing on my to-do list. Because if it's on my to-do list, I will just like, oh, I'll do that later. I'm not much of a procrastinator, but meals like can be. So if I'm stressed out, like that's the last thing I want to do is like go downstairs and like make my lunch and actually eat it. Like, but I have to do it anyways. I just wanted to show sort of what my schedule is. I'm trying to get back into um, is my teaching. And that's, you know, a portion of my life that's very important to me. And it's something I do feel confident. Like I've studied my... Oh, most of my life to have these skills and it's something that I really want to give to others. I guess I just don't want to mess this up. I don't want to mess my teaching up and I know being not being nourished is going to do that. And I also don't want to mess my meal plan up and kind of my progress with recovery by getting so deep into my teaching or my work or the business or whatever else is around there so that I start to slip in recovery and then that nothing works out so i just want to give you a few minutes of like what is it like like what do i do and it i know it probably seems a lot easier than it is but especially auditions and you have somebody who's working on this and you want to make sure that they're showing their best and they're doing the best that they're capable of it doesn't have to be perfect it's not about perfection but making sure that you're guiding them in the right way and giving them all the technical stuff so that they can do what they are able to do musically and make sure you're not just doing the technical stuff and that whole balance and I know it takes a lot I remind myself that it I need to be nourished in order order to put my best into that lesson so that my students can get the most out of it.